Bienvenue à tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this edition, a way of life unchanged in thousands of years is now under increasing threat. The Jarawa people are said to be among the first to have migrated from Africa thousands of years ago as part of the early evolution of our planet and our population. Their way of life is protected by law. They live in a vast zone, its perimeter guarded by the military for the conservation of their way of life. But more and more, the outside world is getting in. Poachers stealing the wild boar, the Jarawas hunt for their food. Criminals selling this as bushmeat at illegal markets. The overall effect on the Jarawas could mean their extinction. There are only just over 400 of them left. Our reports from India. The Jarawas want to have self-rule over their land to preserve their traditions. The Indian government seems more concerned with developing tourism. And the risks, well, it could turn the Jarawas' lifestyle into a human zoo. Alexandre Durant says this. Meeting the Jarawa is not a task for the faint-hearted. They live on one of the largest islands of the Andaman archipelago off the coast of India. There are no more than 420 of them. Reaching them means trekking 115 kilometers across their reserve. After walking for several days, we finally made contact. For 35,000 years, the Jarawa had no contact at all with the outside world. Let's see who can shoot the furthest. Recent studies indicate they were amongst the very first peoples to have migrated from Africa to the rest of the world. I'm going to try again. This time it'll really go far. In theory, the Jarawa Reserve is protected by the Indian Army and access is prohibited. But since 2012, contact with Indians living on the other side of the island has increased. Now, tourists and poachers are threatening their fragile way of life. More than once, tribesmen have traveled to meet with the authorities, but their complaints have been ignored. That is why we decided to break the ban and meet them to hear their side of the story. We lead a peaceful existence in the forest and we're happy. We have everything we need here. The trees bear a lot of fruit and the flowers are magnificent. Here everything is beautiful and peaceful. We like sharing everything. We are all together. And we only hunt what we need. But before, there were no strangers here. Today, they're getting closer and closer to us. The Jarawa are pygmies and hunter-gatherers. Their way of life has hardly changed since the Stone Age. The change has come quickly, and they now have tools, torches, and kitchenware. And they have started wearing clothes. <laughs> Most of their possessions were given to them by the park rangers. Rangers who were created by the Indian government to protect the Jarawa from the outside world. Since then, however, their way of life has been changed forever. Before, there were no metal pots, there were no metal dishes. Sometimes you have to walk at night, but it's too dark. In the past, we used to make candles from beeswax, but today we have torches. The Indians give them to us. They provide more light 
and save us from darkness. Today was all of that. Things have changed. Today, we can walk at night. In the early hours of the morning, the men go hunting. But there's a constant fear of running into outsiders. In spite of the rangers' patrols, dozens of armed poachers hunt with impunity on their land. There are armed poachers who shoot at us. They steal from us. They try to scare us. They want to buy wild pigs from us. They set traps to catch them. They kill our pigs. Sometimes they even give us a little money or clothes. That's how they steal our game. Before, we only ate pigs, but now there are hardly any left. We were forced to hunt deer for food. We don't know what to do anymore. We sit down and think about all that. We think about it all the time. After the wild pigs, it's deer. Their numbers have decreased dramatically since the poachers forced the Jarawa to hunt for them. Wild game is being sold illegally on the Indian market. But the Jarawa have even worse things to tell us. They're offering us tobacco and they want to show us how to chew it. It's not good for us. They give us alcohol. We don't want that either. But they still try and make us drink it. We don't want any, it's bad. But they try and influence us. It's like that in your world. The Jarawa have been given a tiny glimpse of our world but the increasing number of tourists is starting to make them feel like exhibits in a zoo. An Indian policeman is filming for a tourist next to a road that crosses the Jarawa Reserve. None of the tourists on the Andaman Islands wants to talk about these photo safaris, except for one guide who wishes to remain anonymous. 70 to 80 percent of Indian tourists who arrive in Andaman, in their package, like it's always there, like you know, just to have a look, like how these jerwas are, like, and that became actually a commercial business for all these travel agents in Port Bay, like, and people are taking nude photographs and they are selling their CDs, like you know. Uh, naked ladies dancing. It's, I feel like it's, it's actually sort of an exploitation, like these innocent aboriginal primitive tribes, like, you know. At the beginning of the road are the same signs you will see in game reserves. Escorted by the Indian Army, dozens of vehicles cross the reserve four times a day. Inside are tourists who have paid to take pictures of the Jarawa. Tourist videos have been uploaded online. Nobody had ever asked the Jarawa what they thought, but we did. Takulu, one of the hunters, is the clan's spokesman. With tourism, money came into their lives. Over there, they give us money to go shopping. We buy cakes for the kids. 
We buy food, sugar, for example. If we don't have money, it's not a problem. But in the shop, if we don't have money, we can't buy cakes. If you don't have money, you can't get anything. We don't like going on the road. It's very bad. We don't like going there. With the Indian government focusing on developing the archipelago, the plight of the Jarawa seems to come a distant second to other concerns. Especially now the Andaman Islands have become the most popular destination for India's new middle class. The ruling nationalist BJP party is denying the Jarawa the right to self-determination, something the Jarawa say is unacceptable. We don't like the outside world. We don't want to have any contact and be too close to your world. We want to stay the way we are. Your world is bad for us. We don't like it. There are too many people. There's too much noise and no peace. Your world smells bad. We're at home here. This is where we want to live. Here we can find everything we need. In the evenings we're together. We sit down. We build a bonfire. We're happy together. We have no worries. Despite repeated requests, no Indian official was willing to be interviewed. Included in the vision of the Indian agency responsible for the Jarawa is to discharge its duties and responsibilities on behalf of India and the world to this unique heritage by conserving the ecology and environment to enable the indigenous people to live as per their own genius. But the temptation to force the Jarawa from their unspoilt beaches to build hotels might prove too strong, whatever the declarations of goodwill the Indian authorities may have made. And with no clear policy or seeming will to protect them, how soon will it be before the world's oldest peoples simply disappear forever? Our reporter, Alexander Rance, joins us here. Alexander, thank you so much uh, for thank that you. report. Um, clearly, you were going to places where people hadn't been before, and certainly no white people. You could tell by the reaction that people gave. How difficult was it to make this film? The area is a restricted area, so you, you cannot go there. The, the Indian army is patrolling all the time, by boat, by plane. So this, this forest should be completely secured, but it's not, in fact. So we made our way inside this, this territory. We investigate for four years, and we've been there four times. Very small amount of day each time. And since then, the situation has worsened a lot. In 2014, the Jawa women have been abducted and raped by Indian men. And poachers go there, they give them alcohol, tobacco, and they hand the game, as you said. And now the situation is, is getting worse and worse, because the Jawa are only 400 people left. You can see a comparison with American Indians, what happened to them, Native Americans, when the, the Europeans are, are landed in the 15th century. But this people is far more ancient. It's been there for many, many, many more years than the Indians in the, what is now the USA. Yeah, the last studies revealed that uh, the Jawa came from Africa 70,000 years ago. And the, the, the history is repeating itself, uh, in fact. We can see that what happened in the Americas is, is going to happen now in the Andaman Island. And Alexandre, an ancient people, and they are protected, but somehow they're not being protected. Why is that happening? In, in fact, this territory is a, is a blackout. There is no media allowed there, no, you know, no anthropologist. Nobody can go there to study the Jawa or to report what's going on. So this is why we get in to give the Jawa a voice. And the Indian government uh, stated recently that the Jawa want, want to join the mainstream, they want to become Indian. But in fact, nobody e ever asked them if they want to do that. So this is what we did. And I think the, the answer is pretty clear. They said, we want to stay as we are. 
tell us the impression that you got of how the Jarawa's life is, what their lifestyle is, what, how they live. It's a life of happiness and joy and freedom. It's just amazing to see that. And also, this is very sad to understand that it could be stopped very fast. So, yes, it's a quite a very uh, impressive experience. And a feeling that the Indian government is more concerned with developing tourism in this area than actually preserving this rare people. Yeah, a uh, few months ago, the Indian government stated that they want to make Port Blair, which is the local capital of the Andaman, the biggest port on the Indian Ocean. So this is not only uh, tourism, it's, only, it's also economical development and army development. And, you know, there is very few places like Andaman Island in India. It's compared like the Maldives or Seychelles. So there is a huge economical and touristic potential there. And they want to exploit it at the maximum. And, of course, for the Jarawa, that looks, uh, well, very bleak in the future. Yes. Alexandre, thank you very much for your film, exposing a part of the world that, well, nobody ever sees. But you got there for us. And thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Alexandre. Uh, de Reims uh, with that report, which of course you can see again via our website francefancat.com. This is reporters on France Fancat. Stay with us.